About two years ago, I graduated from the Kalamazoo Center for the Healing Arts, where I studied massage therapy. And in that program, they talked a lot about self-care and self-mastery. And essentially, I mean, even the final project ended up being a demonstration of mastery, where we showed how we had grown throughout the program and how we were going to implement that into our lives to better serve our clients and ourselves. So this caused me to kind of shift and say, okay, what does the Catholic Church have to say about self-mastery? I learned a lot there. What can I learn here? So in paragraph 2342 of the Catechism, um, it talks about how self-mastery is a long and exacting work. St. Paul talks about in Titus chapter 2, he, he differentiates between all the different genders and ages of life. Like an older woman might have different um, virtues to be working on than a young man, for instance. So everything separated, it's, it's never acquired once and for all. It's a continual progress through our lives. Um, in paragraph 2015, there's a quote from St. Gregory who says, He who climbs never stops going from beginning to beginning, through beginnings that have no end. He never stops desiring what he already knows. So it's essentially this progress that we have then that goes from we have each new beginning. We keep entering these new stages of life where new virtues are needed to be acquired in order to continue that progress through like to self-mastery. So in paragraph 1734, it talks about progress in virtue, knowledge of the good, and ascesis, which is self-discipline which will enhance the mastery of the will over its acts. So a lot of scripture talks about, you know, overcoming the flesh and following the spirit and being a slave to the spirit opposed to a slave to sin. It's like this tug of war between our flesh and our spirit, you know, like, oh, I don't want to get out of bed, but I know I have to go to church. Those types of situations where as we progress in virtue in our lives, we can continue to develop self-mastery, which is a work of the human flesh. It is a work that we need to work toward with the help of the Holy Spirit and the grace of God. When I had my tattoo on my arm, um, when I got that done, you know, I have the patience, persistence, perfection. And it's if you're patiently persistent, you can ultimately achieve perfection. And I've had a lot of people kick back and say, well, perfection doesn't exist. And it says, well, wait, like, you know, St. Gregory says it's in, um, it's actually in paragraph 1803 where it's the goal of a virtuous life is to become like God. So no, perfection's not attainable on earth, but that shouldn't stop us from trying. It shouldn't stop us from trying to be better. And ultimately, part of that perfection comes with humility. Like, humility is a part of perfection when we can say, hey, I'm wrong. And that's, you know, a big one for me right now that I can honestly say that I'm working on. But it's, it's something that we have to continue to, to develop temperance and all the other virtues in order to fully acquire what it is that God wants for us to be masters of ourselves in order to, to better his kingdom and better ourselves. Um, obviously, you know, Philippians 4 verse 8 is always a really good verse which says, Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. So we have all of these situations where we can focus on the good and focus on where we're going in life and what we want to do in order to fully you know, overcome those temptations of the flesh. And we can only do that by God's grace, but it's also up to us since we have free will to make those choices toward the good and toward the betterment of ourselves and of society and of God's kingdom and just still await that blessed hope that God has that we can rejoice in that Christ is coming back, that we are saved, that we are forgiven, and we can just continue to move forward and... Even if we slip up, like God's there to catch us. God's there to continue to walk with us through this journey. And as these new beginnings keep coming in, as these new stages of life come in, that we just continue to turn to him so that he would be the one that's that's our foundation, that's our grounding, that's the one that's really pushing us through to where we need to be in order to be the best person for him. So that's what I have for today. Happy uh, God at Sunday. Rejoice, rejoice. It's officially the rose candle is lit, which is great. And I will see you guys all next week on the fourth Sunday of Advent and continue to prepare as we await the blessed coming. So have a happy Sunday. Thanks for watching.